Hello, hello everyone, it is Jackie and I am so excited you are here with me because today, or tonight, depending on when you're watching, we are talking all about fun, hands-on activities you can do with your kiddos that are all about syllables. So all about chunking up the parts of the word, counting out the syllables, um, clapping, or we're gonna talk about some other ways you can do it too besides just clapping, to build that phonological awareness, which is kind of like the foundation for reading and writing, right? In preschool and pre-K and kinder, um, we are doing a lot with just listening to words and saying words and breaking words up into chunks, whether it's parts of a word or individual sounds. So today, this is all about syllables, today's um, video. So I want you in the comments, tell me your favorite syllable activity that you do in your classroom. Maybe you do it as a transition. Um, maybe it's one that you um, purchased. What is your favorite or your student's favorite syllable activity that you like to do um, in the classroom? So tell us um, down below. And then as always, links to all the things. So there's links to my TPT store where my syllable um, bundle is. So if you want printable syllable activities, you can go there and grab that. Plus there's links to my uh, my blog and my Amazon storefront and all the past um, videos too. So check all those out to get all the things you need. So syllable activities, we wanna make them hands-on, right? It's just like anything else. Now we are just like listening to the word and breaking it up, but it's fun to make it hands-on, especially for our little learners who one, may not have one-to-one -one correspondence to four yet. Um, so, we, we, need, we may need some props to help us count out syllables. Um, so there's tons of ways you can count out syllables. Obviously, you guys know the way to clap, right? So like caterpillar, so you can clap it. Um, that's hard for some kids. So you might wanna use, um, I have a whole tray of goodies for some other ways you can do it, but you can also stomp it with your feet, caterpillar. You can also put your hand under your chin and that way they can feel their chin move. So ah. Uh, Pull. <laughs> it's hard to do it when everybody's watching, but ah, pull. So that way they can really feel how many times their chin moves. And every time your chin moves, it's one chunk or one syllable in a word. Now, we're not gonna map out the words yet in preschool and um, uh, kindergarten. Well, maybe in kindergarten later. But um, we're really just talking about just doing all of it, just listening and talking about the sounds and the words. So put that hand under the chin and they can go ca ter <laughs> and so my chin moved four times. Because sometimes the one syllable words kind of make things tricky for kiddos. So like shark, my chin only moved once. So that's only one syllable. Because sometimes they'll add on extra ones, right? Um, at least my students always did that. So sometimes the one syllable words are really tricky. And um, the three and four syllable words can be tricky too. Um, so you can clap, you can stomp. You can um, tap on your thighs or your legs. They can tap on the floor. Um, that's one thing you can do. And those are also great for transitions. So if you're waiting in line for maybe to go into the motor room or to go out to recess and you're waiting on something or maybe a friend had to go to the bathroom, um, just start saying, okay, we're gonna clap or stomp the syllables in sounds, which is just a, a part of the word that we hear. So, and just start saying words and have your students clap it. One thing that's really, that kids love, right? Is when you use their name. So, and there's a lot of names that have many syllables in them. There's some that are short, some that are long, but everybody loves their name. So if you're standing in line or you want to do this as a transition activity, maybe you're calling kids one at a time to go wash their hands for snack, um, pick a name out of the bucket and say, okay, we're gonna clap our friends' names. So this is Beckham. All right, ready, we're gonna do Beckham, ready. Beckham, how many is that? Two, Beckham. And then he can, you know, do his crab walks to snack or go to snack. And then they pick another one. So I love using name cards to clap the syllables or count the syllables in friends' names because as always, the world is all about them. So when you're using their name, it is much more fun and they will be much more engaged. These um, name cards, I do one side number case, one side lowercase. They are a freebie in my TPT store. So if you wanna grab these, and also make a couple sets because you'll find you'll, you will use them all the time. So use your um, names. You can do that. Another fun thing to do is vocabulary. We want to get teach kiddos all the vocabulary words, right? So maybe you're doing a theme 
these and all of my theme math and literacy centers pack have vocabulary cards in them and if you have any vocabulary cards you can do it so th these are fairy tale words like jewels you could do that word or beanstalk or tower so you can literally have the kids you can just pull a card and you can clap it night or pull a card i'm pulling all the one syllable words okay castle and they can pull it and then clap it or stomp it whatever it is um so you can count vocabulary cards that are related to your theme to help develop that vocabulary you can do friends names you can also do, buy like a printable set of cards or you can use objects that you have in your classroom. Um, in my TBT store, I have this set, the syllable sort comes with literally a ton of cards for syllable games. So you can just buy this set or buy the bundle, whatever you wanna do. And literally you can just pull cards and you won't have to worry about only having one syllable card like I just did with the fairy tale words. Um, so these are great to just have. You can also put them on a book ring. That works too. So what are some other ways that we can do syllables besides clapping? So one way my students have always loved is to like drum, use like a stick and they can literally like, like a drumstick and they can tap it. So elephant and they can tap it. So get out your rhythm sticks that you have in your classroom and use these for syllables. Now maybe, this, is, this would be too much for your friends this year, or maybe you're worried somebody would hit each other, or your class is having just a little, little bit of a crazy day. I have an alternative that is a little bit not made of wood <laughs> and hard and hurts um, if somebody throws it. So use toilet paper tubes or paper towel tubes. So you can give everybody one and they can just tap it on the ground or on their floor. Elephant, or you can use two, elephant. And now they can clap syllables. These are super safe, so if they hit each other in the head, it's fine, nobody gets hurt. You can also cut up pool noodles to do syllables with. Um, so, elephant or cone. So do it, play the drums and do it. You can also do popsicle sticks with this if you don't wanna have, maybe you don't have a whole class set of these. Um, use um, popsicle sticks. Those are really fun too. You can also use hammers to tap it, so they could do, oops, I grabbed a whole bunch. Watermelon, that's really loud. These are just like wooden mallets. I get them on Amazon. You can also use a hammer from the toolbox in your, um, in the block center. Um, we'll do another word, let's see. Oh, cat. Now, sometimes when kids use, or at least I found, when kids use hammers or something else to count, um, they can't, they don't, they may not have really well one-to-one -one correspondence developed yet, or they are so focused on chunking those words. They're just, they're just padding or counting out the syllables, but they don't know how many there is total. So one thing you can do, and I've done this. So in my, um, full day classroom, when I taught full day, I put spots on the circle and I always used, you know, these little, little die cut things that you would get from like, the teacher store or like this sets from the dollar store. I had a ton of them and I always kept them as you can see. Um, so what I did was I just put them on a sentence strip and I made one, two, three, four. Now you can also write the numbers on them. It's totally up to you, but that way, and you can do them for a ton of different themes. Of course, my not my little spots on the carpet, we would try and match the season or the theme. So, and I, these are just extras I had from those sets. And again, I had a whole class set. Um, I actually just made these. I couldn't find them, of course. Um, but you can use them for any theme. So that way, let's say they're all, you're gonna tap out syllables, but maybe they need an object to tap on so they're not just randomly tapping. So give everybody one of these for small group and you can count syllables and um, you can do like cat, cat, one syllable. Watermelon, one, two, three, four, four. Watermelon has four syllables. Um, so they're really easy to make. You can laminate them. Again, you can write numbers on them. Um, and I just had a whole bunch of them because I just had all of these extra pieces. Now, if you, you don't have to go out and buy these, but they are at the Dollar Tree, or you can also use any kind of bulletin board um, thing you have. You can also do stickers. So if you have some like larger stickers, you can just put stickers on there and they can count 
the syllables that way too. Um, but these sentence strips, they were, had so much fun using these because um, they would be like, oh, what did I get this time? Because again, I would have a whole bunch because I had a whole bunch of those extra. Um, so reuse what you have. So make your own little syllable counters with little bulletin board decorations or um, stickers. Now, one thing I would do, um, a way that I would assess syllables a lot. So I have my assessment binder. This is in, I have a whole blog post about this um, on my website. But in my, under my literacy tab, now this is like my assessment. This is my book of all my assessments. It has literally math, um, social skills, fine motor, gross motor, observation forms, literacy, all the things. So I have class lists and then at the front there are also, um, each student has a list of all the skills. But this one is syllables. So, hold on one second. I don't have these kiddos in my class anymore, but <laughs> just, um, just to cover up their names. So their names are all over here. And then at the top, you can see it says clap, attempts to clap the syllables, counts words with two syllables, counts words with three syllables, and counts words with four syllables. And the reason why there's colors is what I would do is first quarter, I would do one color. Second quarter, I would do another color. And then fourth, third quarter, another color. So, or if I had different assessment dates I did, um, or like maybe like I did August one color, um, September, October, another color. So that way I would know when students were growing or not, but I would use this and I would literally say as a transition, cause I, I did assessments a lot for transitions because I can have one kid do it really quick and we can move. And maybe I would do this if we would count syllables every day for a week and I would get my syllable assessment done that way. And I would say, okay, when it's your turn, you're gonna come up to the board and I would have this on the board just taped up there. And I would say, okay, you can give them a hammer or they can touch it and say, I want you to pick a card and I want you to count the syllables, aquarium. And if they could do it, I would put an X. If they um, could not do it, I would put a merging. And then I could just literally mark it as they went and it was a really quick and easy way to get assessments in. And I didn't have to do a whole small group on it. I could just do it quick as an assessment, which was also a really good phonemic awareness um, or phonological awareness um, activity because we're counting out the syllables and everybody would do it too that was sitting at circle. So it wasn't just the friend who came up to the board to do it. So they would do icicles. Now I would only watch the kid who was pointing because that's the kid I was assessing, but everybody else would still be participating in the activity. So everybody would be practicing their syllables and I could sneak in an assessment at the same time. So you can see I have like X's and emerging. Um, and emerging would just means they tried and we're not there yet. Um, so, um, or they were, maybe they were close. So kind of like a, like a almost got it kind of skill. So these are really fun for doing syllables and they're really easy and cheap too. Another thing you can do is give everybody a set of cubes. So like, let's say we have icicles, I, si, goals. Again, they're tapping each individual object and that way they can go I, si, goals. Three, they have icicles has three syllables in it. So giving them any kind of connecting blocks. So duple blocks, Legos, um, these connector blocks or unifix blocks, any little connector blocks will work. And again, you're not just, if you're, let's say you're doing this for a small group, everybody gets blocks, that way they have something in their hands and you're practicing syllables. And again, it's just a, a, giving them something in their hands, makes it hands-on, makes the activity more enjo enjoyable and engaging for them and plus, it helps a lot of friends um, count the syllables too. You can also do puppets if it's not a distraction, <laughs> right? Um, so here's a new word, pencil. So they just pop and they pop it anywhere. So pen, so two, one, two. And then I, what I have them do is usually flip it over and then we'll start again. Basketball and they pop it and then they get to pop it back. So again, just a little fun hands-on tool just to make counting syllables more fun. You can also do, so we did the sticks, we did the puppets and the cubes and the strips. We also, you can also do Play-Doh. That one's also really fun and everybody loves Play-Doh, right? You can also do like that foam, um, that like foam dough, any kind of like dough 
cloud dough, foam dough. Um, now, they can do it with their finger. And as you see, I just ripped it apart. I didn't have to make all these very fancy balls. So basket <laughs> ball, and they're just smashing it. And then what I do at the end, okay, smash them, and we just make a new word. So we don't like try and roll it because that could take literally the whole activity for some little learners, right? So they're just gonna kind of mush it together and make a new ball. And then we're gonna pick another word. Macaroni. Four, it has one, two, three, four. Macaroni has four syllables in it. Macaroni has four chunks in it. Um, so now they can use their finger. You can also add a hammer and do it. And maybe this, this time we have lemonade. Lemonade. Three. Lemonade has three syllables. And look, you guys, how much more engaging is it than you add Play Doh and hammers? I mean, so, so much fun. And you guys, it really doesn't get on there. It's fine. You're not going to dirty your tools. It's okay. Now, if you don't want to do cards for any of this stuff, like the hammers or anything, you can always do a tray of goodies that you have in your classroom. Now, this is a lot to find. So, this is easier. Less to prep, more to prep. You pick what you want to do. So, another fun thing you can do, and now we're going to, um, I have two ones with movement. So, you can do this one two different ways. So these are those like spiky balls that you like hop on. Hold on. I gotta move this. Yep. Oh, dropping stuff. Okay. So we have four of these. So you can put these on the table. These are um, from Lakeshore, but you can use any kind of like um, balance rocks or balance, any kind of like um, sensory stones used for like gross motor, you can totally use these for um, syllables too. So, alligator, alligator. And they're just gonna tap them, touch them, whatever you want. Now, they can do it with their hands. You can also put these on the floor and they can um, tap on them on the ground or they can hop on them or stamp on them. Like with their foot, they would go like alligator, like with their foot or hop, whatever you wanna do, so much fun. So you can use the, story, the sensory stones on the table or on the floor. You can also use, you can tell these are for gross motor because they're gross. <laughs> um, you can also use like a, a sensory mat, which they usually use for obstacle courses, but then they can hop on them. So they would go, lemonade's up again. Lemonade, they can snap it or they can literally hop on it. So put these on the ground, you call out a card, pizza pizza and they would hop with their feet so do a syllable hop so much fun again it doesn't have to be um phonological awareness games do not have to be boring just because we're not writing or doing anything doesn't mean they just have to sit there and be bored now here are some fun things you can do with objects so you can cook up some syllables so a lot of your pretend food i'm just gonna grab all the food items and again you can put cards in here too it's up to you but I'm gonna show you some you can do with, um, with these too. So I just put a lot of the vegetables in there that have, that are, um, obviously I pre-picked these out. So you can say, okay, we're gonna cook up some syllables today. Okay, ready? And maybe the kid who isn't picking, maybe you have the cubes up for everybody else. So broccoli, broccoli, three. <gasps> okay, pass it to a friend. What are you gonna pick? <gasps> strawberry, strawberry, and then, they can either put it back in or they can hold it until everybody goes around. Um, so you can cook up some syllables. Again, just mix up. So you're gonna see all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the same objects, but I'm gonna just put it in a different bag. So maybe you're doing healthy, like you're doing a dental health or something like that. Put all the food in the bag and now maybe you're just going shopping for syllables. And maybe you're doing healthy me, so or like healthy living or dental health or something, and you're just putting food in there. Now, you can also put just all different kinds of things in. So, like anything that you would buy at the store. So, like scissors, a flower, a thermometer, all the things. So, you go around and you say, oh, screwdriver, screwdriver, three. Now, this I would do shopping for syllables, cooking for syllables, um, syllable, a syllable presents, syllable lunch. I would do this all the time as a transition for, um, cause we always did, um, we did music and movement and then right after that we had snack. So 
people, kiddos would take turns picking something out of a bag or the pot or whatever it is, whatever container it is, and they would count the syllables. I would usually have this out or, like I said, one of the one of the strips, and they would count the syllables. And I wouldn't. I now do I test it every time? Nope. Sometimes it's just a fun phonemic aware, a phonological awareness game. Um, but one kid picks it out, flower, flower, and the whole class would clap it. If the friend wanted to, he could um, clap it, or I would have these in my hand usually. Say, okay, pick one out, ready? And they would go, flower, and they go, oh, two, flower has two, and then the next person goes. It's a really, really quick and easy, fun game. And um, if you like using objects, just keep all of these um, for your syllable games. So, you can go shopping for syllables. Now, how did I get the idea? For all the things, I literally used my syllable cards and tried to find those things in my classroom. <laughs> so, you can also use like a Target bag. If your kids love Target, put all of these things in there and they can go shop. We're gonna, um, I went shopping at Target for some syllables. Now, you're, pick one out. I got a sign at, or um, a sign at Target. Sign, that's one. And then the next person picks one out. I got Play-Doh, Play-Doh, two. How much more engaging is this? You just put everything in a bag. Now they're going to Target. Who doesn't love going to Target? If you're doing a birthday theme, which I love doing at the beginning of the year, throw it all in a birthday bag. And now we are, um, we are doing present syllables. So what did you get? I got a thermometer, thermometer, four. Oh, I got an excavator, excavator. I just happened to be picking up all the four syllable words. But again, just switch up the container to match your theme. If you have any of those fun trays from the Dollar Tree, like it's like a leaf one or a snowman one, do that to match your theme. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can also have a lunchbox, as this is great for back to school. Um, and you can say, okay, what are the, we're gonna figure out, we're gonna, I'm, I packed my lunch today and we're gonna figure out what things should come to school and what things should not come to school. So you can sneak in some social skills too. You can go, tape, tape. Is that supposed to be in my lunchbox? No. What else did I find? Let's see, I found a strawberry. Strawberry, three. <gasps> is that supposed to go in my lunch? Yes. So. I have a cookie. Ready, clap it. Cookie. And you have cookie. So, again, just switching out the container. Super, super simple. And again, you can use those like trays, like that you get from the Dollar Tree that are all the different um, themes, like the Christmas tree, and there's usually like a snowman and a, the leaf tray. Just put that, put all these objects in there or the cards in there. And then you have a fun and quick um, syllable game. So now I want to show you guys all of the printable syllable games I have in my store. So one thing you can do, oh, I forgot about this one. So this is why I have this one on top. So you can also do a syllable hunt in your classroom. Whoops, stuck together. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have these giant boards out. Now, these come in the syllable pocket chart sort game. This one, <laughs> that one. Um, so it comes with all these cards, so you can have them literally just sort the cards. Pizza, two. Or you can put these on the table or on the floor. And you, this is a really fun game too to do during um, like arrival time. So just put them on a table and kind of spread them out and then have a big tray of objects, and students have to pick a tray and then put it on their flower, flower, two. And then again, have things out that, for supports, have some cubes out so that way if they wanna use the cubes, they can. Um, and they're literally just gonna pick items off of their tray. Now, you can add, it, make, add even more movement in, and you can say, we're gonna go on a syllable hunt, so I want everybody to go walk around our classroom and try and find something with, that has two syllables. And they're gonna walk around and then, or you can say, I want everybody to go find one thing in the classroom and bring it back and then put it on the mat as you count the syllables. So again, just a syllable hunt. Cause it's gonna be a little tricky to find four syllable words. So you can do a giant one because we love to do what? We love to get kids up and moving and learning, right? 
so, so much fun. All right, so we have that big one. And then this one also, that one also comes with this giant pocket chart. <laughs> My chair. Okay, this giant pocket chart sort. So basically, it's just a big pocket chart. It has one, two, three, four, and has the claps, the hands on it, so that way if they want to check it, so like butterfly, they can go butterfly. So that way it's on there, and they have a visual so they can check it. Um, so that's there. This game also comes with a movement spinner. So if that isn't, maybe that's not super engaging to your friends. What you can do is you can do the movement spinner. Um, I usually just tape this on the middle. And then, so what they would do is they would spin the spinner. So you're going to touch your head and they would pick a card. Pizza, pizza. And that would do, and they would put it in there. And then they can spin again. Now, there's a bunch to choose from. I think there's a bunch, like four. So there's a whole bunch of different movements to use from. Obviously, there's kick. So pick the one that the movements work for you and work for your students. Don't give them something that will um, make them unregulated or um, that pick the card where they will be able to have enough self-regulation to do the activity is what I mean to say. So there is that game. I think this one's my favorite. You can also stick the little, um, I have it right here. So you can also put it kind of down there in the bottom so that way they remember that that's an option for them to use. So that's one of the games. Another one that I have is syllable puzzles because kids love puzzles. I love puzzles, kids love puzzles. So this one has three different puzzles in it. So it has a puzzle that looks like this. Obviously, these are all the one syllable words, and then we have the two and the three and the four syllable words, so there's that one. Or we have this one, and this one's self-correcting. So it has the different um, kind of, like um, the puzzle's a little bit different shapes for each one. So that way it's self-correcting, so that one's really nice that way. And then we have, we also have the four syllable. And we did put the word on there too to make sure that way, because um, some of the four syllable words um, might be a little bit tricky, but like if we have aquarium, helicopter, motorcycle, and binoculars. We tried to do ones where little learners would know what they are, because um, we don't want them to be unsuccessful just because they don't, they don't know what that word is. Um, but it's also, these are also really great, great games too to also develop their vocabulary. And then there's also another puzzle that's included where there's circle, the circle is the middle and then they have to match all the parts that go, or all the words that go around it. So those are the syllable puzzles. Now this one is my favorite. So this is the feed me game. So we have, so all you'll do, and this one's um, pretty low prep too, which is nice. So you're just gonna grab some bowls. I got these from the Dollar Tree. And then you're, they're just gonna set, you can either set these on there or tape them on there. Everything is sticking tonight. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna say motorcycle and they'll cut it, Mo, or I'll tap it, motorcycle. And they'll feed the unicorn. And they each have a whole bunch to, to choose from. So now there's the unicorn. And of course, you know, I gave you guys options. So we have a unicorn, feed me. We have a monkey, feed me. We have a shark. And we have a, oh, we have a frog. So that way there's four different games. And these are great because you can use these animals kind of during any time during the year. A lot of these games are not um, seasonal. So you can play them all year long or you can get them out at any time of the year. Syllable Towers is another one. So there are a ton of different mats it comes with, different syllable tower mats. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna clap or count the syllables and they're gonna build the tower. So for like helicopter that has four syllables, they would put a tower of four on there. Star is just one, so they put one on there. Um, there we go. So they would put like a tower, towers on there until they are all full until they have towers on all of them. And I said, like I said, it has a ton of different, I think there's like 
15 boards included. So that one's really fun, especially for any of your little friends who love to build. Um, okay, this one might be their favorite. So this one is a chain activity. So you're gonna use your learning chains and you guys, there's a ton of cards this comes with. So you can have it out and only put some of them out this week and then change up the card. I, I obviously for, <laughs> for video purposes, I already linked some of them for us. So that way you can kind of see how it goes, but there's a ton of cards it comes with. And basically all they do is, and there's um, holes on there. So they're gonna count the syllable like strawberry and then they will link it on. And then we even have the, the four with the photographer and the television. So, I mean, how much fun are these? And this is also great too, because when they are using these chains, it's also really great um, fine motor work. So, another fun game. And again, it comes with a lot, like a ton of different cards. So, put it out one week and then with the next week, switch out the cards, but put it out one week, give it a break for a week, and then the next week put it out and you'll have different words they can practice. All right, so if you are a teacher who loves mini erasers like me, this game is for you because this game is a the mani syllable manipulative mats. So they are basically just going to get out some different words. We got soccer, shark, cupcake, we got cauliflower. Um, so all they're gonna do is you're gonna pick what manipulatives you wanna use. So you can use mini erasers and they're gonna put them on there. So soccer, soccer, two, soccer has two. Maybe you wanna use bonbons. Maybe you want them to use um, cubes on there and connect them. Cauliflower, cauliflower. And so they're gonna do four, you wanna cheat. And they would have four cauliflower. And then they could put it together. Cauliflower, or cauliflower. <laughs> or they could use buttons. You could use any manipulative that you have in your classroom that's small. That way, again, they're working those little muscles and they're practicing um, syllables and chunking, chunking words. And then the last two, we have our clip cards. So they would say the word flashlight and then they would put the clip on. You can use any any clip you guys have in your classroom. Popsicle has three. So they would clip the three on there. Or the last um, principal activity I have for syllables in my store, these are Play-Doh mats or like the, um, the dough mats. So what they would do is Get out some play-doh or some foam dough and you can either have them smash make ball little play-doh balls on the the um the objects on the mat and then they can either smash it with their finger to count or they can hammer the dough up to you so and again you can use play-doh you can use the foam dough any kind of dough that you want or that you have in your classroom but I would recommend, recommend laminating these first if you're using Play-Doh, otherwise it might stick to the paper a little bit. So, okay. So I hope you guys loved all of those activities and all of those ideas that you can use to practice syllables in your classroom. Again, poppets, hammers. You can make little your own little strips. You can use, these are probably my kids' favorite. You can make little drums. I hope you guys loved the, all of these syllable activities. And again, all the printable syllable activities and the giant set of cards um, are in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. If you have the syllable bundle, um, go download it because there's a ton of games in there ready for you to go. Oh, don't forget about the hopping and all of the shopping for and cooking for syllable games. So. If you do one of these syllable activities in your classroom, be sure to tag me because I would love to see um, you guys doing activities in your classrooms. So you guys have an awesome night and then I will see you guys next time. Talk to you soon. Bye.